What's going on guys, Super Insane 18 here, and today we are going to be talking about the top 5 meta decks of the January 2023 format. Now, before we get into it, I am very aware that we have some exciting stuff around the corner, but those sets are not quite out yet, so in this video I'm just going to be talking about the stuff that is currently out in the TCG. I know that we've got like Cash Tira that is coming up and how good that's going to be, but that is going to not be on this list because it is not currently out, so just wanted to get that out of the way, and with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump on in. Now, for those of you that don't know, since I believe November, we have been in a tier zero format with the release of Magnificent Mavens. Those gave us some cards that pushed a specific deck to be a tier above all of the rest. So this list is going to be a little bit weird and some of you might think it's a cop out, but coming in at both fifth and fourth, we actually have nothing. Now, let me go ahead and explain. So the reason we're not putting anything in the fifth and fourth slots here is because there really isn't anything worth putting. Now, other than the top three decks, it's essentially a free for all. This format is so unbelievably solved that other than these three decks that you'll see here in a minute, there is nothing that is even on the same level. So we've got a bunch of other things that are maybe sneaking into some top cuts. Like if you look at the YCS Sydney, there was a Sword Soul uh, that made it in there. If you look at other events, there are other decks that make it in. Um, like we had, I believe Crystal Beasts also made it uh, very close to the top cut. But I mean, those aren't necessarily the meta. Now, when we talk about the meta, we have to talk about the decks that are defining the format and molding the format into what it truly is and unfortunately we aren't really in a format that has a fourth and fifth deck that can do this now i say unfortunately because i know a lot of people don't like a tier zero format me personally i think it is the most healthy from a competitive standpoint and a lot of people kind of misconstrue that information they think that i'm saying it is the most healthy in general that is not the case i think strictly speaking competitively it is the most healthy and casually you know it's really not that good if you want to be a casual player and there's nothing wrong with being a casual player or a competitive player it's just what you like and what you want to get out of the game me personally i like that competitive challenge a lot of people at my locals they don't want to play competitively so they're not really liking this format but to each their own so unfortunately for fourth and fifth place we really don't have any set in stone deck there are so many options there's you know exo sisters like i said sword soul uh heroes are putting in work at my locals and i've seen other people post about how their heroes are beating tier limits like there's just so many decks that like are just kind of up in the air and just kind of floating around but they're not necessarily meta so unfortunately for the fourth and fifth slots there's not really a deck that we can place here. Now, coming in at number three, we have Fluanderies. Now, a lot of you know that this is one of my favorite decks. I've made a ton of content on this video. We're gonna go ahead and throw a build on the screen. This is the runner up of YCS Sydney, and we can see a couple of interesting things here. The first thing that I wanna note is that he is playing two copies of the Barrier Statue, and that makes a lot of sense given the format, because once we got the release of Ishizu's for Tier Limits, there was a really easy way that Tier Limits had to out a single barrier statue. The tier limit field spell is able to destroy a card on field whenever a tier limit monster is shuffled back into the deck, so they don't even have to be able to special summon anymore in order to be able to pop the barrier statue, as long as they can get any tier limits in their graveyard alongside an Ashizu with the field spell on the field, they can shuffle it back and pop the barrier statue, pretty much opening up the game to play. So by playing two copies of the wind barrier statue, you're able to establish one on your turn one, making it so that they have to out it, and then once they out it, you're able to quickly quickly establish a second one through things like the trap that lets you summon on your opponent's turn. You'll be able to summon Robina, search another barrier statue, normal summon the barrier statue, or if you even just have it in your hand, you can flat out normal summon the barrier statue. Realistically, it doesn't matter, but the point is, is that if you have two of the barrier statues, typically they're only going to be able to out the one, and that pretty much secures the game for you. I'm willing to bet that the call on two barrier statues is what piloted him all the way up to second place, but there are a couple of other interesting things here as well. Uh, let's take a look at some of the going second cards that he has he's opting to actually play three copies of dark ruler as well as three copies of evenly now i believe that the dark ruler is mostly for the sprite because honestly dark ruler doesn't do all that much to tier limit but the evenly is absolutely for tier limit because i played tier limit at the regional that we just had here in las vegas and let me tell you evenly was not something that i was actively prepared for in one of my rounds at the regional i had set up my full tier limit board and my opponent was playing sprite and he was main decking the evenly i set up my full board he go ahead and even leaves me and i'm thinking okay i know he's playing sprite i've milled some of his cards let me go ahead and just leave my roll kalos that way i can stop the starter i can start stop the gigantic you know whatever it is he may have and then he really blew me out of the water by going and mind controlling my roll kalos so we go to game two and in game two he even leaves me again and this time i leave my infinite impermanence face down and he just clears 
the infinite impermanence. So, like, it realistically doesn't matter. Evenly is such a threatening card for tier limit. Their only technical out is crime, and a lot of players aren't main decking crime anymore. It's delegated to the side deck, and even though it is in the side deck, sometimes you just can't search it because you need to be able to actually set up, like, a play. And if your Kit Kalos, like, if your hand isn't good enough or if your mills are bad enough, you sometimes just can't use the Kalos to get the crime. So Evenly is a very strong card, which makes it really interesting that he's playing both Dark Ruler and Evenly in this deck, even though I guarantee you, if he won the dice roll, he opted to go first because, I mean, you just want to set up your board of you're not allowed to play. But yeah, this is going to be Fluandries at number three. I think it's incredibly strong. Obviously, we have Dimension Shifter, which kind of ruins Tier Lemon's Day. It does hinder Sprite, but not as much because Sprite does also play play D-Shifter in their side, but this is the deck that can abuse D-Shifter the best while still setting up a threatening board, and that is why it's going to have to take the number three slot. Coming in at our number two slot is going to have to be Sprite. Now, let me tell you that I actually almost made this number one, but the recent YCS Sydney kind of changed my mind. And let me go ahead and backtrack a little bit as to why this was almost the number one deck. Um, so recently I've been seeing Sprite perform a lot better than Tier Limit at like regional level uh, events. Like let's take again the Las Vegas one that just happened a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we had majority of the top cut be sprite over tier limit and i think that's just because it's a lot more consistent you don't have to rely on your mills and the ability to play the dimension shifter in the side as well plus obviously you can see here on the build that i now have on the screen that they are playing a card like mannequin cat which can summon out the i believe it's uh, Testudo or Rot Newman uh, pretty much says that none of the tier limit monsters can be summoned and so if they don't have any way to negate that effect like a droplet or something like that in Imperm whatever it may be they really have no way to play against you because all of your monsters are going to be under that 1800 uh, limit while none of theirs will be under that 1800 limit so it's just kind of a really good way to lock them out but I also think that the ability to still go ahead and summon out cards like Totally Awesome are very strong especially when you pair it with cards like Sprite Elf that can not only prevent them from being targeted, but also able to reborn it from the graveyard, giving you multiple negates as well. And then obviously, you know, when you use your Toad, you're going to be able to add back a water, which is going to recur you your Nimble Beaver. And Nimble Beaver is just going to get the ball rolling again on the next turn, since it's able to summon a Nimble from your deck or graveyard, which two level twos on board is all that this deck needs. So yeah, this is a top 32 list from the YCS. Uh, this was just the first top 32 list that I found. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the finals did come down to Fluanderies and Tier Limit, but I still think that Sprite is a very, very strong uh, contender. Unfortunately, it still just can't compete with the number one deck on this list, and you guys already know what it is, so let's go ahead and talk about it. And as if it wasn't already obvious, the first deck on this list is going to have to be Ishizu Tier Limit. This deck is just absolutely uncontended as the best deck. If you look at the top cuts of any of the major tournaments since November when Magnificent Mavens dropped the Ishizu cards, this is going to be taking up a majority of the top cut slots, and that is just because of how absolutely oppressive the deck is. Now, the biggest reason that it is so oppressive is because of how much it can play on your opponent's turn. The number of times that I have seen a tier limit player lose the dice roll and on their opponent's turn one, set up a better board than their opponent just because they had a card like Havness on the field is absolutely insane. Now, the list that you're seeing on screen is a top four list. Unfortunately, at the time of recording, I wasn't able to find Jesse Cotton's first place list. Congratulations to him. Uh, he's been on fire with this deck, and obviously, you know, this deck is just a force to be reckoned with. There are so many powerful cards in this deck that it just kind of feels unfair. Obviously, like I've already stated, we have Havness, which allows you to play on your opponent's turn one, even if you are going second, which is just absolutely insane. Then you have cards like Rhino Heart, which is a one card starter because it will just send any tier limit. You have cards like Perlerino, uh, Primeval Planet, whatever the field spell is called, which not only search you into your starters but also destroy a card once per turn and that is going to be during either player's turn because you are able to play on your opponent's turn meaning that when you fusion summon and you shuffle back a tier limit or if you use an ashizu card and you shuffle back a tier limit you are able to just destroy a card for absolutely no reason and that can really hinder your opponent especially when they are trying to combo off and you just rip a combo piece off their board not to mention you've got kit kalos which is an absolutely insane fusion monster not only is it extension but it is also just a search 
Archer, which can get you into your cards like Sulik, which is an effect negation, but it's not just an effect negation because it can also send a card you control, meaning that you can send a tier limit, which will allow you to fusion, or if you have something like a Kaleido Heart on board, you can send the Kaleido Heart, which will then reborn itself, and when it reborns itself, it will bounce a card, and it will also send a tier limit, and by sending a tier limit, you get to fuse, and the just ridiculousness of this deck is absolutely insane, which is why it has to be the number one uh, playing this deck, playing against this deck. It, it, the mirror match feels like one of the most skilled matches that I have ever played in my entire life playing Yu-Gi-Oh! For those of you that don't know, I have been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! since the day that it came out, so over 20 years now, but competitively, I've been playing for about eight or nine years. Um, I started about early or late 2014, early 2015. Um, so yeah, it depends on what month, but I've been playing competitively for a long time, and out of that entire time, this match just feels like the absolute most high ceiling skill match that I have ever played, which is why I really like tier zero formats, because if everybody is on the same playing ground, then it really does come down to skill. You have the skill of who built the deck better, you have the skill of who can pilot the deck better, and honestly, nothing else is more deserving of this number one slot. Ishizu tier limit is just an absolutely terrifying force of nature. I know that it is probably on the chopping block for the next ban list, so we're gonna have to wait and see, but even so, if you look at the OCG, they recently banned Kit Kalos. I believe they have Rhino Heart at one and Havness at one, and it is still taking up a majority of the top cut slots there. So I'm very interested to see what they will do here, especially like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we've got stuff like Cash Tira around the corner, and Cash Tira Tier Limit is a deck that a lot of people are very hyped and excited for. So Tom will tell, and we're gonna have to wait and see, but that is going to be our number one deck. Well, there you guys have it. That is going to be the top meta decks for January 2023. I'm not quite sure yet. We'll see in editing, but I'm fairly certain this is going to be a short video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. The format is definitely solved and I don't think anybody will really disagree with this. The only thing that I might see you guys roast me on in the comments is that there was no fourth or fifth deck, but hopefully you understand that in a tier zero format that is as solved as this one is, there really isn't much else other than these top three decks that is able to compete. So maybe go ahead and let me know what you guys would have put as the fourth and fifth slot down below. I was thinking for hours and there was just nothing that came to mind. There were no decks that felt consistently good enough to place there as a meta contender because there really isn't anything that is consistently good enough. There are things that, you know, given the right pilot and given the right circumstances are obviously going to make their way into the top cut. But the whole point of this video is to inform you guys as to what the meta is. And aside from these three decks, there really isn't anything meta. So if you guys liked it, you know the deal. Make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, like, comment, share with friends, maybe consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.